Greetings! Welcome to another tutorial video for today's video is going to be the vacant land contract. In this video we're going to be discussing about how to fill out this contract, how to attach any additional addendums with it, and also a seller's vacant land disclosure, which I highly recommend you accompany with the vacant land contract, especially if you're representing the seller, but even if you're representing the buyer, I recommend you utilize these documents and you draft this particular contract in the way discussed in this video. So like I always, before we begin our video, I'd like to take a brief moment to discuss about our real estate brokerage. If anyone's new here, we'll only take a quick 30-40 seconds to talk about it. Niz Realty Inc. So we are a 100% real estate commission brokerage in the state of Florida. This means we pay you 100% of your real estate commission. We have $0 agent fees, $0 hidden fees, and the only fee that we charge is a transaction fee whenever you close a deal. And that transaction fee amount, we let you decide that amount. We know what the competition is charging. We'd like to be competitive and price match and do things that are reasonable and fair. For further information, feel free to contact us at nisrealty.com here or give us a call. Uh, for, for any further information, but enough about our brokerage. Today's video is about the vacant land contract. So let's get into today's video. The vacant land contract is to be used for, of course, when you're selling a vacant lot, a piece of land that usually has no property or asset, you know, building developed on it. It's usually just a piece of land somewhere. So let's begin with the first paragraph here. You, uh, of course, put the seller's name. We have this pre-filled out to make the video a little bit easier with some of our uh, made-up addresses and uh, information. So the seller, you put the seller's full name here. Today we have John Doe as the seller. And then the second part here is we have Billy Bob as the buyer. Now the address. For a vacant land, sometimes they're issued an address. Other times, uh, they don't have an address. They are just a legal description they haven't been developed sometimes they don't have a survey done on them and they're just basically a vacant lot in the uh, public records and they're you know designated by their legal description which is in the public records and it usually looks something like this this is something I kind of made up and just adjusted for the video so what you can do as far as the address the address if it's no if there's no address you could write something like uh, you know, a couple zeros and then write the, um, I just have a made up name here for the avenue and uh, in Orlando, Florida, but you could put something like on the street that it's on or the intersecting streets. You could just put something there if you'd like. It's really not that big of a deal. Um, if you just want to have something written in for the address, I usually do this because I don't like to leave anything blank. I like to fill it in if possible. So I usually just write something like a few zeros, maybe the street or that it's intersecting or on. And then I write the exact legal description. This is where you would actually have the actual uh, particular property or lot designated through the legal description. The address is usually just there to just put something there. It's not really the real address and so forth. What's important is the legal description. And this is similar to what some legal descriptions will look like. They're all different. They're usually something this size, maybe a little bit longer. It just really depends. But this is usually how they're written. And you get this information from the public records. So make sure you have the legal description when you're dealing with vacant lands because that's how properties are usually identified and how the deed is conveyed is through the legal description because a lot of times they don't have an address. So next part here, you just put the section, the township, the range. Uh, sometimes this is written in the legal description. If not, you'd have to find that information out um, either through the public records or another means. So you usually just fill that out. Whatever county it's located in today, it's uh, Orange County. Um, you know, for Orlando, Florida, which is right in the uh, county Orlando is located in. And then you'll write the property ID, which is usually the parcel number. And I just have something made up here to fill it in. But you'll find that parcel number along with the legal description in the public records. So you just put the parcel number there. And if there's anything else that's going to be accompanying this property, you put it here. Most of the time it's a vacant land. There's nothing on there. So usually you know, I just put not applicable how it's written here. If there's something additional, then you'd write it in here in this paragraph. But for the purposes of this video, we're just going to write not applicable how it is here. Next part is the purchase price. Um, you just write the purchase price here. Very simple. Today it's going to be $5,000 for this vacant lot. If it's something different, you change that accordingly. 
then you put the escrow agent's information here. Uh, we have a made-up title company today. You could use your real estate brokerage if your brokerage holds escrow, uh, has an escrow account and holds escrow monies. Uh, our company in Israel, T Inc., does hold escrow money, so we have an escrow account. Um, but you don't, have, you know, it's up to what the seller and buyer agree upon who they're going to use, whether it's one of the real estate brokerages or the title company. So you just put the uh, company's name here, whoever the person's contact you put there. There today, it's a. Uh, this person, Kelly Mumu, just a name we made up today. Um, it's a made up address that we just put here and a number and email. You just fill this accordingly with the information of the actual escrow agent, uh, whoever you're using. Fairly simple. The next part is the deposit. Um, you could write, you could check market company's offers the way I usually do it because most of the time people need a day or two to make the deposit, send the wire over, or bring in the cashier's check, whatever they're doing. Um, those are usually the two most popular method today. You know, at the time of making this video, usually wire transfer is a more popular way to send escrow monies. So I usually like to mark the will be delivered to escrow agent within however many days you need. I personally think three days is good enough. You may want to change out the five, seven. It's up to the, your preference and the seller and buyer's preference on what, how much time they need. In my personal and professional opinion, three days is good enough. They should be able to make the deposit, send the wire over within three days or however they're going to deliver the funds. They should get it done within this amount of time. But that's, you know, my opinion. Changes accordingly to what you feel is necessary. If you're going to do any additional deposits, you would mark one of these paragraphs. Uh, wherever how many days they're going to make an additional deposit. Um, and they'll write it in here. Or if there's something other that you're going to put here for the purposes of this video, we're not really doing anything like that. Most of the time you leave these blank. In some occasions, you may want an additional deposit to be made. Most of the time, in my professional opinion, just whatever you agree upon in the initial deposit, just put it all there in the initial deposit. No reason for more deposits to be made, more wire transfers to be done. It just makes it work, but it's up to you. If you want to fill out these paragraphs and do this, by all means, go ahead. For the purposes of this video, we're leaving it blank. We're doing one deposit for this uh, contract in this video. And the balance to close, uh, if you're using form simplicity, it updates it automatically. If not, you can write it in there, and there it is. Um, in this paragraph, I usually never complete, but if you are completing it, you'll fill it out accordingly, but we're going to skip it because usually it's not being sold by, you know, the square foot or acre or anything. It's being sold by, you know, the lot. This is the parcel of land. This is the price. This is what it's being sold for, $5,000, and we're moving on from there. So we usually leave this paragraph blank. They'll fill it out. Time for acceptance. This is when the contract uh, needs to be executed by. Um, today's date of making this video is 4-22-21, so let's just say they have until uh, you know tomorrow to execute this contract. You just pick your date, fill it in there. All parties need to execute this contract by this date, otherwise the contract is void and null. So make sure everyone signs by this date. That's what this paragraph is all about. Closing date. You know, I put on or before a specific date. <clears throat> so if you could close a little earlier, and this is the latest date to close, then that's the closing date. Pretty simple paragraph. You just fill out whatever date you're going to close. I like to mark it as on and write or before, just in case you could close a little earlier. So, you know, if everyone wants to close earlier, by all means, I'm more than happy to close earlier and collect the real estate commission and complete the sale and have everything done if things can be done sooner. But you always want to have the date for the latest date of closing. So this is how I recommend you fill it out is on or before this date. Moving along, uh, we go down to the next page, paragraph six. In today's contract, the buyer will be paying cash for the property with no financing, financing contingency. If there is financing involved, you'd mark this box and fill out the, you know, According paragraphs, uh, usually when I'm dealing with vacant land, it's usually always cash sales. Um, very rarely have I seen financing on vacant land. It does happen. Uh, I personally haven't seen that in uh, a long time. Usually lately it's been mainly cash cash sales when it comes to vacant land. But if you're going to be doing financing, you'd fill out the, you know, you click this box and fill out this paragraph and fill out the uh, financing paragraphs, whether it's new financing or to seller financing mortgage assumption. Um, I personally don't like to get into those type of things that get a little complex, but if you're going that route, you'd fill it out accordingly. Um, if you have 
questions about how to fill out those paragraphs, you can feel free to reach out. And I got to explain them uh, as best possible, but it's you know pretty self-explanatory. You just we talk to the uh, you know you just fill it accordingly, and you can speak to the buyer's uh, lender or where they're getting the financing from as far as what to fill out and how to fill out these paragraphs and what the information is as far as the interest or you know if it's a fixed rate and so forth you'd fill it out from there so but today for this video it's cash marking it as cash we're moving on to the next paragraph assignability this is if you want the buyer to be able to assign this contract uh, you know, most of the time I always mark they may not assign the contract, as you can see here. So that, you know, if this is the buyer I'm doing business with, and this is the buyer who's purchasing the property, I don't want them assigning this contract to somebody else, wholesaling it out. Uh, or sometimes maybe they want to assign it to another company that maybe the buyer wants to put the property in a company name that they own. So, I mean, if they're going to do that, uh, you can mark one of these other boxes. I personally just my professional opinion tell the buyer okay if you want to put it in another company's name then write the company as the buyer just change it up top i don't want you assigning this to whoever and whenever i want to do you know just have a very simple contract but that's just my opinion how i personally like to do things you can make the contract assignable if you want to it's just not something that i usually partake in i usually just write the buyer this is the buyer i'm dealing with been doing business with and moving along from there so for today's video marking this not assigning the contract moving along the title um usually do a statutory warranty deed mm, i haven't really done special warranty deed usually it's always the first box here if that's not what you're doing then you'd click one of these others and specify or the special warranty deed for the purposes of this video we're doing things fairly standard the statutory warranty deed so we have that box marked Everything else is not applicable. Doing a standard transaction here. Then the title evidence. You'd click this of whoever's going to be paying for this, whether the seller or the buyer. Today we have the seller paying for the, uh, you know, title, um, the title search. So, but the buyer could pay for it. Where the seller, it's whoever. Uh, what the the terms come to and whoever what is agreed upon. Sometimes the buyer pays it. Sometimes the seller pays it. It's just uh, whatever the contract, uh, you know, goes by whatever one agrees upon. For the purposes of this contract and video, the seller is going to pay for it, and it's going to be, uh, you know, done within seven days before closing date. <clears throat> the next paragraph, uh, you know, usually mark this a title insurance commitment. Um, usually, don't do an abstract title, which is down here. Uh, doing a fairly standard video so most of the time it's the title insurance commitment by you know a Florida licensed title insurer uh, this is how I recommend you usually do it I don't really recommend going with the abstract title I've really never seen this filled out down here um, but you know each sale is different if you're going that route then by all means but I recommend always doing it the standard way when it comes to the title insurance having it by a Florida licensed title insurer I really never see this down here so we're gonna mark this one here and move along next paragraph title examination usually you can leave these blank I usually fill them in because I don't like to leave things blank you know 10 days is good 30 days is good for the cure period it's a fairly standard paragraph you could read through it if you'd like further information but really you could just skip over this paragraph here or if you're like me, I want things filled in and complete, you just mark it 10 days, 30 days. That's good enough. You want to change the days, you can. These are more than enough time. Property condition. Um, you know, seller would deliver the property to buyer at closing in its as-is condition. You know, so it, it's uh, being sold as-is. I highly recommend especially in the state of Florida. I don't know about other states and laws in other states, but we do, we're do. we licensed in the state of Florida, in his Realty Inc. Um, usually always sell things as is and allow for inspections and so forth. So it's written in this contract for us already. And then you just write the due diligence period. You know, buyer at buyer's expense within seven days, and so forth. Uh, you can read through this paragraph for further information, but you know, you could give them more time for this particular video, I wrote seven days. Usually that's more than enough. If they need more time, you can write 10, 15, whatever they need. 
this particular video or write in seven days for them to, uh, you know, do what they have to do and so forth. As far as inspecting the property and everything. Or you can mark the no due diligence period. Usually don't mark this. Usually allow always the buyer to uh, have some time to uh, do what they got to do. Just verify everything and so forth. Um, anything they want to do. Environmental assessments, other tests and so forth. It's all written in this paragraph. Feel free to read through it. But for the purposes, make this video a little bit faster. Just fill in whatever day is there. I usually put seven. You could add more or less. Up to you. And what the seller and buyer agree upon. Moving along, usually you go straight to paragraph 10 after that, seller's cl uh, closing costs. Usually it's fairly standard here. Um, if there's other closing, maybe there's a transaction fee that your buyer or the seller is going to be paying to your brokerage, you write that in here that they're going to be paying a transaction fee of whatever amount of dollars to, uh, you know, Ms. Realty Inc. or whatever brokerage name write that in here. If not, you could just leave these blank or I write non applicable because I don't like to leave things blank, but it doesn't really matter too much. Special assessment by public body. This paragraph down here is another important one. Um, you just mark seller or buyer who's going to be paying the installments due after closing. Most of the time, if there are special assessments, the buyer will usually pick it up and take over at that point. Um, if that's not the case, then so you mark seller and the seller will pay assessment in full at time of closing and so forth. But, you know, most of the time and for the purposes, purposes of this video, buyer usually takes over the installments if there is any special assessments. And usually that's how it's done. If you're doing something different, by all means, change it. If the seller is going to be paying it in full, if not, this is how it's done. And you move on to the next paragraph. Buyer takes over the assessments. Then other things in this contract are fairly standard things, nothing for you to really fill out. Um, you can read through these paragraphs. Everything's fairly standard from here. Feel free to read through these, nothing for you to complete here. Um, the only thing next to complete is down here in the broker's paragraph, paragraph 21. You fill in everyone's information here. Seller and buyer's uh, agent, brokerage address. You fill that in accordingly. We're going to leave this blank and You'll fill it in with whatever information your brokerage has. Paragraph 22, addenda. Most of the time I leave this blank. If there's something else like a backup contract or kickout clause, anything like that, something else, fill it out here, mark the box, and fill this out. Most of the time I never fill this out. Usually nothing like this that I'm doing with these contracts. I do fairly standard transactions, but if you're doing something additional, then you can change it. Additional terms, uh, you could write in the additional terms, anything extra here, any additional terms. I usually write that the vacant land is being sold and is accompanying, uh, you know, it's being sold as is and accompanying this vacant land contract is an as is comprehensive writer. Um, I usually like to have an additional as is um, writer accompanying the contract. You don't really necessarily have to because it discusses in the paragraph up above that we saw. Let's go up there real quick again. Uh, it's already being sold as is. See property condition. Oops. You know, seller would deliver to buyer an as is condition. But, you know, I like to add the additional, uh, this, the comprehensive writer, which is right here. It's because it discusses the as is in more detail and so forth. I like to make sure that everything is covered, everything has been disclosed, and it's being sold as is, and everyone acknowledges that this really is as is with all these obligations and so forth. You've been given your inspection period and right to cancel. And this is the amount of time that you have for your inspection. Um, and you, know, you just fill in a seller, buyer, property address. I usually write the address and the legal description here when it comes to a vacant lot. So make sure you write the legal description here if it's vacant land because that's usually how you identify vacant land. It's not usually by the address. Sometimes they don't have an address. It's uh, only by the legal description. So yeah, I like to accompany this with my contracts, uh, you know, just to make sure to cover my license, myself, and cover whoever I'm representing, the seller and so forth. Um, then also you could, uh, that I highly recommend is you include a vacant land disclosure statement. So you could also say in this particular uh, additional terms that 
uh, let's say you could write accompanying. It's a shame I didn't write this beforehand. I just thought of it now, actually. But you should write it in here that you know accompanying this vacant land contract is a vacant land disclosure statement. Whoops. Something like that. You know, you could write a company in this vacant land contract as a vacant land disclosure statement. And you would have this vacant land disclosure statement uh, drafted. You don't fill this out for the seller. The seller fills this out on their own. The only thing you could do for them is you could write the name of the seller, um, the property address, and a legal description. Everything else you have the seller fill out. It's not for you as the licensee to fill this out. They have to write down when the property was purchased and they have to fill out all these questionnaires, what they know and they don't know about the property. Um, this is for them to fill out. They can ask you questions and you can explain to them what this this means, you know, like utilities, uh, you know, what types of irrigation does a property have. You'd explain to them what that, that sentence means, what it's asking, and the seller right, you know, if they know or don't know or what the situation is. Um, so you could explain what these questions mean and what they're asking, but the seller has to fill this out themselves. This is not for the licensee or the agent or the realtor to fill out. This is for the seller to fill out only. Then the seller and the buyer will sign, print, and date, and initial every single page. And this is pretty important. I always recommend a seller, uh, some type of seller's disclosure for any deal you do. Uh, you know, just to cover yourself, the realtor, and to cover all parties involved. That everything that is known has been disclosed, and if nothing's known, it's been disclosed, so that there's no issues and everything has been, uh, you know, disclosed to the buyer and so forth. So, these are two things I recommend to a company or vacant land contract: the vacant land disclosure statement, and like I said, this is for them to fill out, so we're not going to go through this. This is for the seller to fill out. Um, you could read through it if you'd like, but you know all these things are fairly standard things that a seller should know, or you know, needs to find out about the property, or they just right don't know if they don't know anything about the questions and so forth. But they need to disclose that they don't know and so forth. So I'd recommend accompanying this particular disclosure statement. I like to accompany the as-is comprehensive writer just to make sure everything has been disclosed and. Uh, further elaborated through these paragraphs here that everyone initials and accompanying it with this contract and that's pretty much it you know you can fill out these boxes down here if you're doing the counter offer rejection but usually I leave these bank blank never really get into that and the last part is just for the buyer and sellers to print their name and sign and date you know and then the effective date down here uh, you fill this out when everyone signed everything uh, you know the date that everyone executed the contract Beside that, make sure everyone initials every single page. Um, it happens quite often. Sometimes they'll miss a page and not initial one of them, but everyone needs to initial every page and sign at the end of the contract. Beside that, that's pretty much the end of this video. This is the vacant land contract. Uh, you know, pretty st drafted fairly standardly. Not going over any of these special cases or you know financing and so forth um, but if you have further questions about anything in here you can feel free to reach out but this is most of the time very standard way in how to draft this contract and how it will look so hopefully this video was helpful and we'll see you in the next uh, video that we're going to be doing for the next contract to discuss till then take care